Figure out what. Can I start? Ready for action. All right. Hi, uh, this is Nick Hausman of Wrestling Inc. Uh, congratulations on your win tonight. Uh, it was a really brutal bout and an even more emotional kind of uh, post match moment there with you all in the Briscoes. Uh, what was going on there? Like, the, you know, you guys have talked a lot of trash and it got very emotional all of a sudden. It kind of felt like a almost like a send off until the Bucks came off. Like, what was going off? What was going on there after the match with you guys? Um, so, uh, as you can tell by my face, uh, in real, you know, in real life, I've been in a uh, lot of fights, and I haven't won very many fights. I've been in a lot of fights with my best friends too, um, and you know, uh, when things like that happen, you, you get done with your fights, and you respect the guy a little bit more. Um, and I think that's what it was tonight. Uh, those guys, we've honestly, uh, this is my best friend. We've never met those guys before, uh, before final battle. And uh, tonight was our first time ever touching in a professional wrestling ring for a professional wrestling match. And uh, God damn it, you have something like that that happens tonight. Um, it doesn't happen every single day. And we were lucky enough that uh, somebody decided to allow that to happen. And uh, we were lucky enough to have it with those guys, and we uh, understood that. And when, 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 when guys are that tough and they want to be as good, uh, and they want they want to match your intensity, match your, uh, your 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 athleticism, your enthusiasm, your your physicality. God, you can't help but respect them. You know. Yeah, and I, I think the the thing about it for us, like you said, like the the harder you hit somebody, I think the more respect you earn from them when they hit you back and they, they don't fold. And all this with those guys, and I hate to use this word because it's overused, but it was organic. Like, we never just, we never started messaging each other saying, hey, let's set something up. It was just, there was buzz that started online and people started like, hey, we want to see this match. And for a while, you know, we didn't even respond. And we finally said, let's throw some fuel on the fire. Let's, they, they keep talking <laughs> their trash though. It's, show how it's done and the whole thing has been a roller coaster we didn't know when the match was going to happen if where when but this guy never let it die and you know we found out it was going to happen probably about a day before all you guys did before it was announced like <laughs> it's literally about a day before okay we had already I, I made plans this weekend to be home in north carolina like i was supposed to be home with my family right now and we got the news and i said who needs nope. family <laughs> no <Nope. laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um that's the thing with these guys it's always just been about being real they were yeah. real we were real we weren't trying to be anything we weren't and neither were they and i think people appreciate that and then the match out there tonight we weren't trying to go out there and have this super fancy contest Con yeah. athletic contest we just wanted to to fight and to feel yeah. and yep and I, sorry i think ultimately um in real life they think they're uh, you know, as, as great as guys they are, and as much respect as we have for them, they really think that, we're, that they're the best tag team, maybe of all time. Uh, and obviously, myself and Cash think that there's no other tag team that can do the stuff that we can do, and that makes for a great competition. Yeah. So we had no plans on shaking their hands after the match. It wasn't something like yeah. we thought it would be a cool moment. But sometimes the best moments are when you're in the moment, and it just happens. And after that. As much as I, I would love to punch them in the mouth every single night because <laughs> I want to show the world that we are the best, and I think this right here does that. Right. There's nothing they should be ashamed of. They shouldn't, you know, hold their heads down. They should hold their heads up, and we want to make sure that they knew that and that we appreciate what they've done, not just for wrestling, but especially for Ring of Honor. Thank you, Joel. Hi guys, Joel, Tony. Hi. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hi guys, Tony. Hi. Um, how important was the bus from the arena, the building? It was insane. I mean, how, how important was that bus for you guys to perform tonight? Yeah, uh, God dang, like the, the, the buzz over the last couple of months, you know, uh, for me, uh, I, I've been so nervous. I've been so nervous because uh, as much as I talk tough, I want to deliver to the fans because without them, uh, I can't go home to my beautiful wife and my beautiful daughter and feed them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so delivering a match that would live up to their expectations scared the shit out of me. Especially while trying to stay true to ourselves. Like yeah. wrestling a style that we're going to wrestle when fans are kind of more used to car, car crashes crash. and stuff. 
um, and 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 you know I had an idea of what what I wanted it to be, and, and we had an idea of what it, we wanted it to be. But man, you never you never know if you can you can um, hit the marks that the fans uh, want to see. And uh, as soon as we got out there and, and hearing them and, and seeing how excited they were just for the match, uh, that meant the world to me, man. Uh, and that's the that's the stuff that I live for, you know. Yeah, I think especially coming out of the pandemic, you appreciate things so much more. And like, I had fun wrestling during the pandemic era, but I think it made me a better wrestler. I think it made him a better wrestler. I think it makes everybody a better wrestler because you don't have the crutch of the crowd sometimes to know when something's good or bad. Or if something is bad and the crowd's good, they can cover that up for you. So I think wrestling during the pandemic when you don't have that, and it's just you out there having to rely on yourself and thinking, this, this is good, this feels right. Coming back to a crowd like this where it's 2,000 but it seems like 20 and they're just, I would rather wrestle with a crowd like that every single night than a crowd that sits on their hands and they, they're 20,000 deep because I want to feel the energy every single night. Like when I'm in there and I get goosebumps talking about it, I could, you can f like literally feel the reverberation from the crowd through you that's ah, there it is again we're lucky we're, yeah. we're lucky we're lucky man to do the, the to, we're so so freaking lucky awesome thank so you so guys just two more questions please let's start with Stu <laughs> Stu Meyer from the Horn and Sports Guys Talking Wrestling out of Austin uh, first of all congratulations on the win this match has been talked about for seemingly months this was that dream match. So, and I know you guys put a lot of pressure on yourselves. I know the Briscoes do as well. How much more pressure did the anticipation of this match, everybody, you know, clamoring for this match, how much more pressure did that add to you? I think the unpredictability, like I said, like we didn't know, nobody knew. So I think that made it even more of a buzz because like, it's all over the place, there's zigzags. There's nothing, there's no straight line where you can see the end in sight where you know where it's leading to. So every now and then we, there's like a wrench thrown in and then you get a, a bit here, a bit there where you can kind of build on it. And like I said, because of that, I think that added to it. It made it more special because it wasn't just by the numbers, cut and dry. We see where it's going, like nobody did. Like I said, we found it the day before everybody else. So I think that made the buzz more special but I think also people appreciate what we bring to the table, what the Briscoes bring to the table, and they just want to see good wrestling. Yeah, uh, I think the extra Zoloft I was taking every day <laughs> for, the, for the last few weeks, uh, you know, talks uh, volumes of the anxiety. But man, that's what we strive on. Uh, I don't know, aside from, my, again, my wife and my daughter and what I perceive to be God, uh, there's nothing more beautiful than professional wrestling. And uh, we are lucky, not because he's sitting here beside me, but we're lucky that we have a man that loves professional wrestling as much as we do as fans, as wrestlers, uh, that, that produces professional wrestling. And um, we got to go out there tonight and, and not only live our dream uh, and, and, and tell the stories that we've wanted to tell for years, but man, my God, um, I, I, I uh, without getting emotional, like, uh, I got to do it with my best friend too, you know? And um, just taking that and, 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 and being able to say, <clears throat> we could go down as one of the greatest tag teams ever, uh, that means more to me than, than anything. So uh, we, we live on that anxiety, that anxiety, we live on that pressure, and uh, I'm just so glad it's over. <laughs> I'm just glad it's all been good. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes like the day of the show, especially, I always question why I do this because the anxiety and the nervous energy that just is in me makes me want to just run away and never do this again. But then as soon as the music hits and you go out there, it's just the best thing you could ever do and it's addicting. And I think that's why we push ourselves so hard because we know like if we give everything we have, the fans are going to give everything back and there's no other job like that where you can go out there and you you can literally get the immediate returns on the work you're putting in just based off everybody out there that's watching and you know when it's good it's good but man the anxiety leading up to it is bad <laughs> <laughs> last question will 
Thank you, Will Washington, uh, Grapsity on Fightful.com. Uh, so, uh, along with this match and uh, the match you guys had this past Wednesday with the Gun Club, um, you guys seem to be kind of heading into some new territory uh, as a tag team, uh, being fan favorites. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how that's kind of changed your approach in the ring and what you see for yourselves going forward with the fans behind you? Yeah, uh, I don't think it changes anything, you know? Uh, if we changed anything, the fans would not want to cheer us. Um, I think they respect us, and I think that they see the passion that we bring into wrestling. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if there are baby faces and heels and, you know, things like that. Um, I think there are guys that, and, and girls, that the fans attach themselves to emotionally. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to make them, I mean, God dang, I'm wearing a Bret Hart shirt. He made me feel a certain way. You know what I mean? For 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 38 years, he made me feel a certain Whether way. Whether he was a good guy or a bad yeah. guy, it didn't change yeah. how he felt I, about it. He hated America. So did I, dude. I don't care. <laughs> uh, and that's what Brett I want to do. That's what I want to do as a wrestler. I want to make you feel something. I'm not comparing myself to the fucking freaking one of the greatest of all time. What I'm What I'm saying is, I want to make you feel a certain way. You know, I can't, I can't do a, to, a tope. I can't fucking Sasuke over the top rope. But God dang, I'll work as hard as I can to make you feel a certain way about me and about who I'm wrestling with. Uh, and to the point where you can't deny it and, and you either love me or you hate me. And if you love me, that's cool. And if you hate me, that's cool too. Because at the end of the day, I work my ass off and I earn my check and I get to go home and take care of my family. And if you like that, you fucking like it. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. That's okay. You know, uh, I don't consider FTR, or, you know, I don't consider us to be good guys or bad guys. We're just fucking guys. You know what I mean? Um, so, new territory, we're still locking up. You're still say, snatching a headlock. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's the same thing. Uh, do I appreciate the fans? I fucking love them. You know, I, I freaking love the fans. Uh, sorry about that. Um, uh, I love them, uh, and, and I hate them. If, if, <laughs> and if they love us back, that's cool. And if they don't, I'll be okay because tomorrow is Saturday. You know what I mean? And I'll still be there tomorrow. Yeah, like I, I still want to stay true to what FDR is, who we are, like what we've always been. But it, I like that it gives us a, a unique challenge. There is there will be like a little bit of differences here and there. Like I haven't thrown an arm drag in a decade. Now I'm throwing them every night because I'm a steamboat, baby. Um, it's just the approach will be slightly different, but we're still going to cheat if we get the chance. We're still going to take every shortcut we can. And, you know, you can cheer us, you can boo us, but as long as you feel something, I don't give a shit. That's it. Just feel. Just feel. And love wrestling, man. And I, if I may, uh, you know, yes, we you talk, Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, we talked, uh, we spoke uh, before the match and on this subject and what you just asked about, Will, a lot's changed in the last couple years in pro wrestling. These guys, uh, two years ago, weren't even in AEW and now they've held tag team championships, the AEW World Tag Team Championships, the AAA Tag Team Championships, and the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. Damn, so good. All in a couple years and things have changed so much and, we, and, you, and Cash brought up wrestling in the pandemic era and what uh, a conversation that the three of us had before the show actually was we didn't know what tonight was going to be and we, I knew the attendance had really turned great and since, since specifically we announced this match things had picked up like we had only sold uh, and I should not leave before I bought the company before I signed the agreement to buy the company and we announced it I think they had only sold about 250 tickets and we ended up with like over 2,000 people here today and it's largely through the anticipation for this match uh, the pay-per-view buys when we get them back I know already from some of the preliminary digital numbers I've gotten that this is going to be one of Ring of Honor's best pay-per-views ever if not you know it's up there and this match had a ton of anticipation but we talked about where we were uh, about a year and a half ago when they were the world tag team champions and they had the match in AEW full gear in front of you know, uh, about maybe let's say about 70% as many people that were here, but it was a very different type of thing because Daly's Place, we had social distancing, the fans were wearing masks, people were just getting used to coming back. You know, in New Japan, they were just clapping and, and uh, even here people were a little bit more restrained. But when Young Bucks versus FTR happened in AEW for the World Tag Team Championship, it may have been the worst moment of your life. Uh, it may have been one of the worst <laughs> nights of your life. But 
The fact is, we didn't know. We didn't know what was going to happen with the Ring of Honor belts. We didn't know what was going to happen with the great match. And we didn't know it was going to be the classic that would hold up there with your great classic matches like that match. But now you have another chance. You have another chance and you have two championships and you've proven so much in the year and a half since then. And now instead of uh, about 1,250 people in a 5,000 seat building, you're gonna be wrestling in front of 5,000 people in a 5,000 seat building, and every single one of them wants to see FTR versus the Young Bucks, and a lot's changed, and things have maybe changed around a lot in that time, but one thing that hasn't changed is the second time around. It's, I think it's gonna be a great match, and I can't wait for Wednesday, and congratulations to both of you, and I love you both very much. I love you, dude. I love professional wrestling. You're so lucky, you're so lucky. I can't wait.